بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today is the 31st parable which we are going to explain from Surah Al-Kahf and that is from verse number 32 to verse number 44 about 13 verses giving this parable and this is the parable of two persons one who is very proud of his property his garden his followers his sons and because of that he thinks that uh, as long as he got a very prosperous life in this world it is going to last forever nothing can destroy it and that is the very same concept about wealth and following which led him to say that I don't think the day of resurrection is going to happen. And even if it happens, then I will have similar things or better in the hereafter. That was the ideas of the first person. In contrast, there is the second person, of course, a believer, who says that whenever you are given a blessing from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give thanks to him. Always say that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, that what comes to me. Masha Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Say these words which show your belief that every movement in this universe comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the power and strength originates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you say that, inshallah you are going to receive his help everywhere at each and every time. But of course the first person is not willing to hear to that advice and this is why he remains in his fantasy. And what happens that in the end, his garden is struck by a thunderbolt. Within a little time, it is destroyed completely. And then he has to give his remorse. And he has to show his regret by saying that I wish I could have not committed shirk at all. Now that is uh, the parable in essence but we have to take these 13 verses one after the other. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Wadrib lahum mathal ar-rajulayn ja'alna li ahadihima jannatayn min a'nabin wa hafafnahuma binakhl wa ja'alna baynahuma zara'a Set forth to them the parable of two men. For one of them we provided two gardens of grape vines and surrounded them with date palms. In between the two we placed corn fields. كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهَا نَحَرًا وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَحَرَا Each of those gardens brought forth its produce and failed not in the least therein. In the midst of them we caused a river to flow. وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَابِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا Abundant was the produce this man had. He said to his companion, in the course of a mutual argument, more wealth have I than you, and more honor and power in my following of men. That ayah which gives a clue why the people live in vanity and fantasy. Because of two things, that they are proud of their wealth 
and proud of their following. And they think because of these two things, they are the masters of their destiny. And that is not the case. The master is always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ قَالَ مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا He went into his garden in a state of mind and just with soul. He said, I deem not that this will ever perish. That was his argument. Because when he was uh, doing wrong to himself, وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ and we have said before that uh, wulm, that applies to all the sins, including the major one, which is to associate deities with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is known as shirk. وَمَا أَذُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَيْرْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْ هَامٌ قَلَبًا now do I deem that the hour of judgment will ever come. Even if I am brought back to my Lord, I shall surely find there something better in exchange. So that person does not believe in the last hour. And he got doubt about it. So this is not the case of a Muslim. It is the case of an infidel. A person who does not believe in the last day. And... Uh, he says that even if it uh, happens to come, even if it uh, happens to come, he says that I believe that Allah is going to give me more there. قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِن نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا His companion said to him in the course of the argument with him, don't thy deny him who created you out of dust, then out of his sperm drop, then fashion thee into a man. That is the dialogue, the speech of the believer to him when they are talking to each other. That why do you why do you deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you? Out of what? Out of dust, out of clay. That is the first man, Adam. And after that, each man who is coming out of a very mean origin, and that is the sperm. And from that sperm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fashioned you into a full grown-up man. So what uh, does it uh, mean here that, man, look at your origin. Look at your origin. Why this arrogance? Why this false pride? You are created out of sperm. A very mean thing. Who can create from a sperm this good-looking man? Who can do that? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that is the case, then be thankful to Allah and uh, always devote yourself or give your devotion to Him. لكنه والله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا. But I think for my part that He is Allah, my Lord, and none shall I associate with my Lord. That is the belief of the believer. Allah is my Rabb, and I am not going to associate anyone with Him at all. And He keeps on admonishing him. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِنْ تَرَنِ أَنَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَوَلَدًا Why did thou not, as thou went into thy garden, say, Allah's will be done, there is no power but with Allah. If thou dost see me less than thee in wealth and sons. When you enter your garden, it was good for you to say, Masha Allah, whenever anything good you got from Allah, sons, daughters, house, anything you got, 
your garden. Say, Masha Allah, that what Allah wills. That is by the will of Allah. And then add, La quwwata illa billah. There is no strength, no power except with Allah. Even when you have seen me that I am less than you in, in the wells and in the children. So, if you got more blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, be thankful to him. Say these words. And if you say these words, فَعَسَى رَبِّي أَن يُؤْتِيَنِي خَيْرًا مِّن جَنَّتِكَ وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتُصْبِحَ صَعِيدًا زَلَقًا It may be that my Lord will give me something better than thy garden and that he will send on thy garden thunderbolts by way of reckoning from heaven making it but slippery sand. أَوْ يُصْبِحَ مَاءُهَا غَوْرًا فَلَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ لَهُ طَلَبًا The water of the garden will run off on the ground so that thou wilt never be able to find it. Our Prophet ﷺ has said once that should I not tell you about the treasures of Jannah? أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ أَلَا كَنْزٍ مِنْ كُنُوزِ الْجَنَّةِ And then he said that treasure is to say لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ There is no movement even when I move my hand even when I walk even when I do anything that is by the power from Allah, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. And in the very same way, he said that, ask for Jannah, ask for Paradise. And the 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 ground of Paradise is very pure and very beautiful. And it it wants some some growth there. You have to plant something there. And when he was asked what was the plant, he said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Anyhow, we were not able to come to the end of this parable, but as we have said in the beginning, the person who does not believe in Allah and does shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is going to receive destruction completely. وَصَلَّى الله تعالى على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته